Okay, now that we've introduced you to some of the tools, let's go through Jason's own personal workflow on a special project. Uh, this is basically the way he started most of all of the projects throughout his career. Yeah, that's right, Todd. You know, basically, uh, I, I wanted to do something fun, so I chose a fishing lure. I love going fishing. I love taking my kids fishing. I've never created a lure before, and I know these tools are going to be perfect for doing that. So that's what I did. And like how I start most of my projects off, a lot of times it's a quick conceptual sketch to, you know, get my ideas out of my brain, get them on paper. This is great because it serves as a takeoff point. You know, it's like, yeah, this is the objective. This is what I'm trying to make. Let's make this happen. And then when I get into 3D space, magic happens. I see different surfaces and, and areas that I couldn't really work out with pencil and paper. So I'm in my favorite software, X-Shape. I start a new component. I give that component a name right away. This is gonna help me stay super organized on the platform. Then I get my orientation right, get my bearings in 3D space. See this chair up here, the top and the side. I select the side because that's what I want to model to. Then I open up a insert picture and you guessed it. I'm going to take my sketch and I'm going to drop it right on that center plane. There. And the great thing about this is it has a scale ability. I can scale on it on screen points. I grab this point, drag it to the nose, grab this point, drag it to the, the tail. And I'm going to give that about a value of three inches. You know, <laughs> Todd, I looked at my, uh, my tackle box and I figured three inches was a good place to start and just went for it. Yeah. I mean, the sketch that you make, it doesn't, it's not made to a certain scale, but now you've scaled that. Now you're going to make the thing to the right size. When I get my, my background in, I got an idea of what I'm going to model to. Uh, I just go down to my subdivision tab and then I select box. Okay. And I just drop a box, select mid plane, goes right to the middle of those planes. And now I'm ready to rock and roll. You know, I got something to start with. Now, a fish doesn't look like what I would think of as a box, but <laughs> that you started with a box. Why'd you, why'd you pick that? You know what, Todd? I use 99% of the things I model in X shape start with a box. I just love how simple they are, how symmetric they are. Uh, for me, it's just a, it's an easy place to start. Okay. Okay. So yeah, right away, I, <laughs> this is a trick I use all the time. I just, bam, I slap a mirror right on the center of that. So whatever I do to one side, it's automatically going to do to the other side. So this tool here, these, these arrows and these arcs and these dots, this is called the robot. And this is the entire key to, to modeling in X-Shape. You, you can scale on these little points, non-uniform scale. You can rotate by grabbing these arches. And obviously you can pull and warp them in any direction that you want. Okay, so that's really the key, the robot tool. And that just automatically comes up when you select a surface, an edge, or uh, a point. Now I can just start modeling in 3D space, just grabbing and pulling. But I do have one issue. I can't quite see my sketch because the model is, is solid. So I just click up here and I drop the opacity a little bit so I can see through my surface onto my sketch, okay? Here's a quick non-uniform scale, kind of dropping the tail down into the back there, and then just pulling and dragging and going for it. Yeah, it's a lot of the same same kind of tools and steps. There's not a lot of like different things to, to make it to make it start looking like something different. You're just pushing and pulling. Yeah, so right here I'm just gonna select this one edge and I'm gonna hit insert loops and it just adds a perpendicular loop right to where that was, which is giving me more detail so I can get kind of the, the belly of the lure, you know, swoop to swoop in there just right. Yeah, so at this point, you know, I'm just I'm just modeling, I'm having fun with it. I'm switching viewports, which is important. I, I see it looks a little boxy. I'm just able to grab some edges and corners, do a non-uniform scale and just pull everything down. So all of a sudden, you know, it, it's not a box anymore. It's this, this very organic shape, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely not a, just a straight up box anymore. Right. This right here is important. I really like changing, you know, my modeling view to screen. I, I feel like it's more adaptable. It's easier to model organic things in screen mode. And I get less of a like 
boxy uniform shape uh, when, when I'm modeling in screen mode. Uh, this is the subdivision face tool. What it's gonna do is add more detail to that particular surface that I selected. Now I have you know more data, more lines, more vertices, more surfaces to to push in you know this eye socket where where the fish where the lure's eyeball is going to be. Okay, that's a great tip right there. I mean, you definitely want to start out with the 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 minimum number of control loops and faces that you that you need, and then add them in as you as you see that you need more control. That that is key. Start out simple, get a feel for the robot tool and, and build from there and add more detail as you go. hundred percent. Now I'm just creating a, a new bookmark and, and I'm saving this file. So I know right where it's at. There you go. Keep your, keep your files organized. It's always yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Then I just added a new subdivision surface. This time I chose the globe, I uh, just scaled and rotated the eyeball into the place, select the mirror tool. And bam, I got two eyeballs and doesn't look like a box anymore, does it, Todd? It's starting to look like a little fish. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And we got there really quick. But the key is to just jump in, have no fear with the software. You know, it's not going to take your birthday away and, and just start modeling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the great thing is, um, like you said, you got there really quick. So what's the next step? Because you've got, it's not quite there. It doesn't quite look like your sketch. Right. What's, the, what's no, next? Yeah, we're definitely not done yet. So next, I'm going to jump into SolidWorks, add some engineering to this, because I really want this lure to have like a little wiggle waggle to it as it swims through the water. It's got to look like a real fish. All right. So then you're going to, you, you probably need to add some more, you know, detail later on in X shape. And what's great is these tools are compatible with each other. Whatever you create next shape, you can then open up in SolidWorks, no problem. But it's about picking the right tool for the job at hand. That's right. 